Hey, Jim and Laurie, I want to thank you for your kindness to our ministry at this incredible moment in history where our young people are out there today as I'm talking to you, risking their lives, bringing hope and healing to people. We are seeing an absolute deluge of, of lost souls, people who a week ago had jobs and cars and homes that are being bombed and ground to dust by Russia. This is unbelievable. We are watching prophecy unfold. I want you to pray for, you know Nadia in Ulazana. They called me a few minutes ago and they filled up a pickup truck. Nadia drives a pickup truck that we bought her. And uh, she has filled this pickup truck and has gone with Ulazana out of Romania, uh, I'm sorry, rather out of Moldova into Transnistria, which is the Russian controlled enclave, just like Crimea is. And they've had to go through this place to a village of people who have given all their food, their own personal food, to these beleaguered uh, refugees that are walking through their village and they've been feeding them. And they contacted us and said, we have no food, can you help? And Ulizana and Nadia got a pickup truck full of food and, and drove through Transnistria. And I got a text a few moments ago from, from Ulizana at the border, a photograph of them at the border. And she says, please pray for us. If you, if you don't hear from us, you know where we are. And she was being lighthearted about it, but it's not funny. And so these kids are literally risking their all to feed the, and, and, and care for the broken. And I couldn't do it. I could not do it without your friendship, Jim. You have always been, as long as I can remember back in the days of the Bible College with my dad in Scotland, nearly 40 years ago, your kindness was always there at the right moment. And again, you're stepping in and being a part with us in this miraculous harvest. One of our vans, the, the Sprinter van that you drove in, Laurie, is running back and forth right now between the Romanian border and the Ukrainian border, back and forth, ferrying um, refugees that have nowhere to go. There's, the capacity in Moldova is, is at its deadly limit. So they're, run, this van is running back and forth all day and all night. And uh, so we just, just pray. We've managed to get most of our girls out of Ukraine. They've taken perilous journeys down to the border. Nadia went and picked them up and they're safe in Vatra village. But we need a miracle of food. That is what we need in supplies. And thankfully at the moment, the big stores, the one that you use, Laurie, is still open. The doors are still open. And so we're going there and buying our limit every day. And uh, we're filling it up and going out, we're cooking some of it, giving some of it away. And uh, we, can't, we can't maintain this. We're, we're a, a small ministry that's doing major ministry outreach. And um, I just know, I know that your kindness and your graciousness towards us is, is making a difference. And I know that our folk watching right now, they've been part of our ministry for years and years in Moldova, even in Romania when we adopted Andrew. Your family, this great family that we have and I'm part of, can change a life forever by reaching beyond the world you're in. So I pray for you, Jim. I pray for your health. I pray for the vision that you have to be the voice of the prophets. What, my goodness, if ever we've needed a voice of the prophets, we need it now. I'm watching it being fulfilled in blood and sweat and tears over in Moldova right now in Ukraine. A woman appeared the other day and she had a little boy and, and she could hardly speak and she finally managed to put sentences, disjointed sentences, explaining uh, family, dead, gone, all gone. And she and her son were the only people that escaped this, this for the whole, from the whole family. And the wee boy looks just like Rowan. Glasses, and he stood there and, and they wondered, Ulazana told me they, they thought he was, there was something wrong with him and he just stood there and he's been struck mute by what he'd seen, his whole family being killed by the, by the Russians. And he stood there and urinated and he couldn't control his bladder, just, just stood there, hopeless. And I got a text this morning from Ulazana that he's hiding behind a bed in the room and they can't get him out, they're trying to coax him with food. And his name is Omar, Omar. And uh, you're looking at him right now on the picture. I need you to pray for Omar. He is representative of tens of thousands, tens of thousands of Ukrainians that are being ground under the jackboot of, of Russia. 
And God's put us there. I didn't ask for this. I certainly didn't ask for this. This is too painful to understand. My dread is we don't have enough money to keep our kids going. Can you imagine orphans that are literally spending their life up and night and day cooking nonstop? And then suddenly I, I say, I'm sorry, I don't have any more money to help. It's, it's unbearable and that's what we're facing. And I just, I just pray that you would, that you would ask the, the folks and the, the, the family to say, listen, can we go an extra mile with Philip? I love you so much. I appreciate you more than I've ever done. And thank God I can go on a wee camera and talk to you like this out of my heart and know that it won't be bouncing off a stony heart, but it'll be taken in. Laurie, I know you're a mom to these kids and we can make a miracle if, if, if you guys could just stretch a bit further with me, please. We love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.